Just a day after Albuquerque police say they didn't know of any more incidents leading up to the death of little nine year old Omari Varela, we learned that in fact there was one more incident. It turns out an APD officer was sent to investigate a third report of abuse. The officer in this case did write and filed a detailed report. Now, this one was from Christmas Eve of 2012. A worker at a cell phone store reported to police that he saw Cynthia Varela Casals slap Omari and punch him in the stomach. Officials say the officer talked to the store employee, interviewed Omari and his mom at their apartment, and had a paramedic even check out the boy. The officer looked at the store surveillance video, but apparently said it was too grainy to see what happened, so he decided there wasn't enough evidence for a child abuse charge. The officer did, however, notify CYFD. We can't speak about the specifics of our investigations, but, but the findings of our investigation were consistent with the finding of, uh, findings of the Albuquerque Police Department. The cell phone store incident was just two months after APD and CYFD were called to Omari School to check out an injury to his face. That officer chose not to arrest Cynthia Farella Casals, even though CYFD did find a substantiated claim of abuse, so Omari was sent home. So now the question is, did APD alert the officer responding to the cell phone store incident about the school incident? So far, APD is not answering that question. In other news this morning, a man who announced this week that he was suing two former APD cops for what he calls excessive force was arrested again. On Tuesday, Nicholas Bloom was charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm. His girlfriend told police that Bloom punched her in the face and broke her nose after she confronted him about allegedly having guns in her apartment. Bloom is a convicted felon. He is suing two former APD cops for the beating he took during a 2011 arrest that was all caught on camera. He won't be as available to work on the case with me, but I'll just have to go see him in jail. Two officers from the 2011 case were fired. They're now appealing their terminations. A longtime officer, Pete Casetas, has officially been confirmed as the 21st chief of New Mexico State Police. Yesterday afternoon, the state Senate confirmed Mr. Casetas as chief in a unanimous vote. Senators didn't even question him about the recent shootings by state police officers, something the department has been criticized for. Governor Martinez appointed Casetas in August to replace Chief Robert Schilling, who was retiring. Mr. Casetas makes $103,000 a year. Well, the city of Albuquerque has received 44 applications for its chief position. The national, national search firm is getting a short list of candidates ready. The finalists will be interviewed by a local panel and the mayor. Interim Police Chief Alan Banks leaves this month to take the top cop job in Round Rock, Texas, outside of Austin. Less teachers are calling in sick these days. Take a listen. Well, what we've seen in the first half of the year is about a 15% decline in the number of absences. More than 6,300 teachers work for Albuquerque Public Schools. New numbers show fewer of them are calling in sick. District officials, including Superintendent Winston Brooks, believe new evaluation systems, the one that's in place, is the reason. 10% is based on attendance. The rest is based on student achievement through testing and other measures. Governor Susana Martinez and Education Secretary-designate Hannah Scandera Put the controversial evaluations into place despite strong opposition from Brooks and teachers. APS says nearly 500 teaching jobs have been eliminated over the years, which could also account for a drop in the number of sick days. Improving our schools has been a hot button issue in our state, especially now during the 2014 legislative session. And yeah, now we have some encouraging news about a group of Albuquerque charter schools. The Southwest Secondary Learning Centers have been recommended for reaccreditation by an external team. That means they've been recognized for high standards in education. So we sent News 13 Samantha McDonald out to Southwest to see what is working well there. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Matt. Well, there are several programs at these schools that got a stamp of approval from the accreditation review team. And staff say they hope these programs can serve as a model for other schools to follow. I'll ask you the question, and then you tell me the cities, and I find them. Victoria is a high school senior in a college classroom. In fact, she's getting credit for both high school at Southwest Secondary School and college at Central New Mexico Community College. It's going to make the transition going to college next year a lot easier for me. 
Southwest Secondary School has the most college level courses attempted and completed in the whole state. Bogota, Colombia. Thanks to the dual learning program, Victoria will be able to enter college as a sophomore, but she's in the minority. Recent data shows 51% of the state's high school students need remedial courses in college. But with the dual learning program, school officials see it as a way to fix that problem by preparing students early. Colleges now know that they are not taking a risk with a student, that this student is coming to them A, prepared, and B, can do the work. Another program noticed by the accreditation review team is the Smart Lab, where students work on high-tech projects like building robots. It's just another program that has gotten the students interested in college and beyond. If anyone ever asked me if I could build a robot in the future, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I can. I'm just driven to succeed and to push myself as far as I know I can go. Staff say the school has received some of the highest evaluation scores in the history of the state. Back to you. All right, thank you for sharing some good news this morning, Samantha. The next round of accreditation is going to be in five years. Liz? They call them Young Invincibles, and the New Mexico Health Insurance Exchange is launching a campaign to help reach them. We are talking about adults who are 18 to 34 years old who are not covered by their parents' health insurance plan. According to experts, these uh, folks amount to about 70% of college students who are not covered. So at 11 o'clock this morning, the New Mexico Health Insurance Exchange is holding a news conference announcing their campaign to educate the young invincibles about the need for health insurance and their options under the state plan. And if you need a job, pay attention to this. There's a huge job fair today that is going to be going on for everybody, not just students. Is at the University of New Mexico. It's uh, on campus. It's called Job Expo 2014. 90 companies that are all hiring right now will be there. And again, this is not just for students. It is for everybody who's looking for a job. It goes from 9 to 3 at the Student Union Building on campus. Bring your resume and dress to impress.